So there's a wide variety of imbalances and malfunctions that can go wrong in the body that can create a wide variety of symptoms and health issues. And we talk about a lot of these in our books and courses. So in this video, I'm going to help you understand if somebody's dealing with more than one imbalance or issue at one time, what is the priority? What is the hierarchy of these things that can go wrong in the body? And what should a person focus on first to help them feel and function better the fastest? Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving anybody medical advice here. These imbalances and malfunctions that we're going to talk about, that we talk about in our books and courses, if this is all new information for you, I'll put some links in the description below for some free resources where you can learn more about these and dig deeper into these. But somebody can look at just simple self-tests that they can do at home using tools that they can pick up like at a pharmacy or a health food store to run some simple tests on their body chemistry to get an idea if they might be leaning too far in one direction or the other. And none of these tests are diagnostic. These are just to get a picture of how the body might be operating to give you some indications of what steps might help you feel and function better the fastest. So I'm not going to go too deep into all these imbalances, but I'll give you a quick review just in case this is new information for you. And then in the links below, I'm going to give you a link to download my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts. And you can download that totally for free, the whole book. And that walks you through all of these imbalances and malfunctions. And I'll also put a link to our totally free digestion course. So you can pick, ah, I feel like reading or I just feel like watching videos. And either of those free resources will help you understand not only these imbalances, but how to run these simple self-tests to get an idea of which direction your body chemistry may be going. So when we start off here, we're going to look at this electrolyte excess and electrolyte deficiency imbalances. And, and these are basically a situation where a person might not have enough electrolytes or minerals in the system for the system to function correctly. The body really needs minerals like to send signals from the body to the brain and from the brain back to the body. And for a lot of things to function correctly, there needs to be enough minerals there. And if a person doesn't have enough, they'll often see a very low blood pressure number, like that systolic number, which is the top number, will often be lower than 112. And again, that's not a diagnostic thing. It's just an idea of, well, that person probably doesn't have a whole lot of minerals in there if their blood pressure is that low. And here we see an electrolyte excess situation where a person may have too many minerals in the system because the body is not excreting them correctly. And all these excess minerals are building up in the blood and that cause that blood to be thicker. And then that thicker blood requires more pressure to push it through the system, which can elevate our blood pressure. And there's other problems that can come from this imbalance as well. So that's when we're looking at the electrolyte status of the body. And here we're looking at things at the cellular level. What is the body state of that circadian rhythm at the cellular level? And during the day, the body should be more in this catabolic state where the body's very good at creating energy and kind of keeping us going all day. And it's also very good at breaking down tissues so that those tissues can be rebuilt and renewed. That's how the body renews itself. And then at night, it should move into this anabolic state where the body is very good at rebuilding and repairing and sleeping and resting. So we like both of those states. We need all those things to happen. But some people can get stuck in one of these states most of the time, and it can create a wide variety of health issues like anxiety and constipation and tachycardia. And over here, we, think, we see things like, you know, overly loose stools and chronic diarrhea issues and an inability for the body to rebuild itself. So maybe the person is just kind of falling apart and why don't things rebuild and what's wrong with all these connective tissues? Why don't they rebuild? A lot of times a person can just be stuck in the wrong state. And here we're looking at how is the body creating energy? We want the body to be able to create energy by burning stored fat for fuel, but also by burning carbohydrates and sugars for that type of glucose type fuel. The body should really be able to do both. There's a lot of diets out there now that might push a person more towards doing this situation. And in some situations, that can really help a person fix a major problem. Um, so those can be beneficial, but a lot of times this is not so great. This also has the ability 
if someone's really stuck in this fat burner site, it has the ability to create some oxygen utilization issues and some problems like that. So when you can create balance over the long term, sometimes these diets can be very beneficial short term. And I use a lot of these keto, carnivore type, no carb diets with a lot of my clients when it's appropriate for that client. But there is no diet that is right for every person. So anybody who thinks that there is should shut up. They should focus on just shutting up because it's just not right. Here we're going to look at the autonomic nervous system, which is kind of like this system that runs a lot of the show behind the curtains. It kind of, we don't have to think about breathing. We just kind of breathe. And that's done by the autonomic nervous system. And this sympathetic side is the fight or flight side. So if we're faced with some type of emergency situation, the body adjusts how it's operating to help us optimize for survival for that emergency. So it's an appropriate state to happen when we're being chased by a lion and the body's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna create more glucose to make available for immediate fuel source so we can run away as fast as we can so we don't become lunch. So this is an appropriate state. And this parasympathetic state is our rest and digest state. So when we're in that state, that optimizes the body to be able to digest correctly and break down our food and access all the nutrients in that food. And when we're looking at alkaline and acid pH type balances, we're not talking about the fiction that all the pH gurus say. We're like, oh man, you got to alkalize or you're going to be dead by Thursday. That's not the fiction that we look at when we're looking at here. We're not looking at urine and saliva pH to see, is it alkaline enough? Oh, you got to alkalize more. That's not really how the body works. We're looking at blood pH when we're doing this. And urine and saliva pH do not coincide with blood pH. That's fiction when people say that. So we're looking at the pH of the blood. And this can really affect the way that the body operates. And there's some malfunctions that can push the blood too far on the alkaline side. And when that's the case, that can create oxygen utilization issues. And there's also some issues that can push it too far on that acidic side. So we want to have a balanced pH in that scenario. So when we're looking at all of these issues and we're running tests to see, okay, what kind of picture is going on with my body? A person may have more than one of these issues going on at once. And in some cases, you know, if something's really significantly wrong, like if someone has a, a fasting blood sugar of 280, that's a really strong indication that their body is burning more fat than carbohydrates. They're having a hard time processing carbohydrates. And they might be like, well, if I'm doing so good at burning fat, why am I so fat? Well, it's because the body is storing every carbohydrate as fat. You're not really processing the carbohydrates correctly, but you have to burn fat for fuel to get the body going at all. So if that's the case and there's an imbalance that's that significant, a fasting blood sugar of 280 is really high, then that would really become a priority. You really want to prioritize that to help correct that issue so that the person doesn't go into an emergency state. But generally speaking, when we're looking at the hierarchy of these imbalances, we look at the electrolyte status first. We view that as the priority. And when we're talking about a priority of imbalances, if there are digestive malfunctions going on, then that becomes the priority. Because we really need to be able to digest our food correctly to be able to have a chance at really correcting imbalances. With these imbalances, you know, a person can use some supplements to help move the body in one direction or the other, but we can also use food choices to help improve some of these imbalances. The problem is, it doesn't matter what food you're eating if you can't break that food down. If that food is just going to become this toxic mess in the body, you're not going to be able to improve any type of imbalance. So we want to make sure that a person has the ability to make enough stomach acid to acidify their food correctly. We want to make sure that bile is flowing down from the gallbladder and this bile helps us emulsify our dietary fats so that we can access fat soluble vitamins like A, E, D, and K. This bile also helps us neutralize the acids that are leaving the stomach when it mixes with this bicarb that comes from the pancreas and then the pancreas makes all these enzymes that help us digest our food better. Down here, as we're going through the large intestine, we need a, a good gut flora there to help us digest some of our fibers and other types of foods further and it helps us make a lot of our vitamins. So there's a lot of things that go on in this digestive system that help our body get what it needs in order to improve some of these imbalances. So 
if someone has a major imbalance, they really need to work on this first. And they can work on the imbalances in conjunction with this, but they need to start putting attention towards any type of digestive symptom that they're having at all. Any burping or bloating or acid reflux or constipation or diarrhea or nausea or indigestion or you know maybe food just kind of sits there like a rock in their stomach for six hours or even skin or acne issues. All of those are signs that the digestive system is not working correctly. And we really need this bile flowing because that's the main detox pathway for everything that the liver filters out of the body. So when that detox pathway is not working correctly, that has the ability to thicken up that blood with a bunch of junk and things that should not be in there. And that could push the person towards this electrolyte excess imbalance. So, but beyond digestive issues, we view this electrolyte status as the priority over these other issues unless one of these issues is very significant and it's creating the problem that the person really wants to focus on. Like, you know, there's a variety of issues that can cause chronic constipation, but this anabolic imbalance is very common to see in that scenario because in this state, the body sends more of our water to the kidneys and less to the bowels. And then the bowels can become hard and dry and then we can't poop and we just sit on the toilet for three hours and nothing happens and we get up and we cuss. So if someone has a severe issue like that, they might want to prioritize this, even if they also have an issue here. But mostly we want to look at the electrolyte issues first, because if a person has a deficiency, we really need to lift the minerals in the system, help more minerals come in so the body can utilize those, or it's going to be hard to fix some of these other imbalances. And when you can fix an electrolyte imbalance in either direction, a lot of times it will help improve these other issues, okay? And then the next priority becomes this cellular level stuff where it's anabolic or catabolic, where the body needs to create that circadian rhythm going on. And a lot of times people can't move back and forth from day to night in the circadian rhythm from the catabolic state to the anabolic state because they just don't have enough vitality. They don't have enough resources in the system. It takes a lot of resources to make that move every day and night. And if someone's dealing with this electrolyte deficiency problem, sometimes that can be why they can't move back and forth. So when we can fix that, all of a sudden it can sometimes create improvement to this imbalance if someone's really stuck in one state. And, and next we wanna look at how is the person creating energy? That becomes the next priority. And then when we're looking at this autonomic nervous system, a lot of times these are going to improve when you can improve digestive malfunctions or you can improve one of these things that's creating stress to the body and pushing it into this kind of fight or flight state all the time. Because you can be pushed into this sympathetic state if you have a stressful life, but you can also be pushed into that state too far if your body is stressed. Maybe because it doesn't have enough resources to let the body function correctly or maybe it has too much junk and it can't detox correctly and it's like, what do I do with all this filth? You know, how, how would your house be if you never took out the trash? That would be a stressful place to live in. It would smell bad too. So we want to fix some of these things and it can sometimes improve these issues as well. And same thing with these pH imbalances. Like a lot of times if someone cannot process carbohydrates correctly, that means that they're not creating CO2. CO2 is a byproduct of the body processing carbs and sugars correctly. And when we make CO2, CO2 is acidic and that can help balance out a bloodstream that's leaning to alkaline. So sometimes if someone can't process their carbohydrates, maybe they're leaning towards a type two diabetic situation, then you're often gonna see an overly alkaline bloodstream that's creating oxygen utilization issues and that bore effect kicks in and the oxygen can't get down to the tissues where it's supposed to be. So that can create a lot of trouble, but when you can fix this, now the person can process carbohydrates better, they can create CO2, and that acidic CO2 can help balance out this overly alkaline bloodstream. And just remember, it's important to be improving digestion to have a better chance of really improving these imbalances. In the books and courses that you can get for free, we talk about specific supplements that can help push imbalances in one direction or the other. And we also have advanced supplements that work really well at moving these imbalances one direction, helping a person improve an imbalance with a specific advanced supplement formula. But those formulas are only available if you're working with a coach 
or if you've graduated from our consumer version of our bioindividuality coach course that we made to help train our health professionals, we made a consumer version so people that kind of want to learn how to be their own coach can go through that. And if a person graduates that course, then that gives them access to those advanced formulas that we're talking about. And that course is available in our KIY membership. We'll put a link in the description below about that membership so you can check that out too. So you can see that you know, there's a lot of things to look at when you're looking at different imbalances in the body, but for the most part, that's the hierarchy that we like to look at. We like to really focus on the electrolyte issues first, and a lot of times fixing that is going to fix these other things. Sometimes fixing this cellular level stuff can help these other things improve, and, and so on. So if you're going through our books and courses and you're finding that you seems that you're dealing with some imbalances, I hope that helps you figure out where you might want to put your attention first to help the whole system work a little bit better. And again, we'll put the links to those books and courses in the description below so you can get those for free if you want to dig into this and learn a little bit more. And right now, if you want to learn more about this anabolic imbalance, you can jump over and check out our video on understanding an anabolic imbalance. I can't wait to hear about your results.